All right, got the latest little technical or te uh, technological addition here. Um, so as I've said before in our in previous posts uh, or in my community post that I'm getting a workshop, which is a 12 foot by 30 foot or 36 foot uh, uh, pre milt uh, building or prefab building. So um, that's going to come in a couple weeks. But I needed to get some networking in there and everything else like that. So I'm just getting all that ready right now. I do have to get conduit for power and uh, networking ran out there. I will be using fiber optic cable for the networking. And then um, once I get like a bigger building, if that actually happens, excuse me, I will uh, use this as a junction point to run uh, fiber optic or run uh, connectivity out to that building via fiber optic. Uh, I will be using like OM3 50, 50 over 125 cable and um, yeah and then I'll be using a MicroTik um, device. I'll, I'll put the actual like full name or full uh, uh, what's it called sorry I'm like short on words I just like decided to record. Uh, but I'll put the full uh, model number and everything like that for this uh, switch. It actually is MicroTik, so M I K, uh, M I K R O T I K, and these devices are pretty pretty simple. Uh, they're not too bad. Um, I would say that setting up VLANs and things like that is a little bit on the hard side, but I found a really good article which I'll also link as well, and um, that explained it worked for first time i did have to do one or two things uh, or one thing on my uh, my uh my cisco nexus switch to make it work because it was actually doing um uh, blocking because of stp uh so instead of doing like a spanning tree port fast um network uh or spanning tree, yes spanning tree network that means like you know it's a network trunk on the other or that's a that's a trunking port but you want it to come up fast um you just have to take that out and uh, that made it work a lot faster, or that made it actually work properly. Um, this will be going, this cable here, if I can get it unstuck. Anyways, that cable. Um, that cable will be going to the first wireless access point. In this box here, I have the MicroTik. Uh, it's a four SFP port and one ethernet port uh, switch, and the SFP ports can you know, do any number of uh, different types of uh, modules uh, and you can do like you know 10 gig um, copper or even 10 gig and 10 gig um, fiber so I'm doing 10 gig fiber to this from my main switch in the house um, the reason why I did all this really I got this box from uh, Lowe's but the main reason why I did this is this micro tick runs really really hot and I don't want that to be a problem especially in the shed um, it will not be really climate controlled or anything else like that. So I just want to have really good ventilation and airflow um, to it. What I had to do, though, is uh, get this box. And I didn't feel like, you know, waiting until after Christmas and everything like that to get a box, a plastic one, and then drill that whole thing up. I do have some boxes, but um, I, I felt better doing this. Now, it's hard to torque the metal. So what I did, so I can actually do the fan cutout and some other things, I have an acry acrylic inlay. Uh, so inside of there as like the floorboard I have acrylic so I can actually mount stuff via velcro um, It's a little bit easier uh, to do it against that because it's going to be one flat surface Across all of the different peaks and you know dips in there for all the mounting holes uh, So I made an inlay for that and then I have velcro uh, Attached to the devices so I can pull those up double-sided tape on the power strip that I have here and uh, this uh, power adapter that I have as well um, for the PoE switch. But this is the MicroTik. I took the case off of it or the cover off of it. I'll probably keep it just like this. I kind of like the way it looks as well. Fan kind of gets in the way, but you know, fan is that's the whole reason why I had to put it in an enclosure like this is to put a fan on it, um, directly cooling it, and I can enclose other stuff as well. Uh, with these glands here, uh, this is a PG-29 gland and then another PG-16 gland and another PG-16 gland on the back. Um, and I'll be running the fiber through here. What I'll do is have an actual fiber jumper cable coming out of here and then I'll have a coupler on that, on that so then I can connect to it and disconnect it as necessary. I shouldn't be doing that too much though, but I just want to make it to where I don't have to open up this whole case all the time. So. Um, I'll be running uh, some uh, 
copper or some ethernet extension uh, cables through here. So essentially, yeah, extension cables. So I'll have them all connected in here, pre-connected, and then I'll just have them out here as pigtails to where I can just connect cables. So I don't have to do like keystone jacks or anything else like that, make it a little bit easier. Um, so I fabricated this, uh, or I cut this um, off of a larger sheet that I got from Lowe's as well. And I also, uh, here. Sorry. I also made a pretty decent like I got some window it's like uh the window um gasket and you can get that from those as well and I got that all around. Really like how this came out. Um with these standoffs here I have a nut holding it in place and then I use the wing nuts um to you know you know take it out tonic take it on and off. I really don't need it though because this stays in place like this. And everything's pretty snug in terms of the holes. That's pretty precise, and I got some really good holes with that. Um, I did use permanent marker all over this, and um, I forgot where I, I, I know there's a way you can remove permanent marker, um, but I had forgotten it. So I looked it up, and you know, you just use rubbing alcohol, and you can just remove permanent marker. So I had all this stuff marked up. It's a lot cleaner now uh, in terms of look. I would like to like as I get like more equipment, like um, smooth out and bevel these edges here to make that a little bit smoother. So I'll probably do that later on. Once I get um, something, uh, uh, probably a uh, table saw or a table saw and a router and like, you know, jigs and all types of other stuff set up. Um, all right, cool. Let's take the cover off of this thing. This is a pretty high power fan. I have this grill over it. I, had, I did order a mesh to go along with it. And um, the mesh will just like protect it, uh, you know, protect anybody's fingers even more. But also, of course, just add for f filtration. But not much. I mean, it's not much that's needed. So, as I said, this is pretty tight in terms of, like, getting it off. Um, the fan is connected. This is an AC-powered, I think it's like a 3,000 RPM fan. Um, not too bad, not too noisy. So, But this will be in probably the gym or walled-off section of the shed. So, um, that should be good. And while I'm doing construction and stuff and putting all this stuff in... Um, I can actually still have network connectivity and everything. I got another wireless access point that I just found out of nowhere. It's like I, co I, was, I collected all these wireless access points for this very project of me, like, you know, getting a house and put, I have like four access points in the house now, and then I'll have another one in the workshop, which would be great. And then I also ordered another one for my patio so I can get wireless access out to my lake. So like, I'm freaking, I'm probably going to have this whole co property covered for wireless access. So that'd be really good. Um, this connection here, this is, this, like, this is the, this is a PoE, uh, and management port. So, I just have it actually used as a switch port now, and that connects to the PoE switch here, and to one of its uplink ports, over there. And it's the only way I can get it to work, because, in terms of, if you use, like, the copper, um, SFPs in here, um, they just don't work too well in terms of, uh, unless you, like, Unless it's like a, a smart switch on the other end where you can control um, duplex and speed, um, they're going to have a problem to go, if, even if it's auto neg or if you say, hey, listen, 10 meg, 100 meg, gig, 10 gig. Like, if you set it, like, it won't work properly with the micro tick. Now, um, I'm sure there's ways you can fix that, but I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to use this for a management port or anything like that. Everything will be on this uh, trunking port here. And uh, then I'll have another port here. I don't think I'll actually be using these two other ports. I just want 10 gig connectivity. I might actually use one port, actually, now that I think about it, to maybe a workstation or something like that that I'll have in the uh, workshop itself, just so I can actually have that. Um, then I'll have, like, full wire connectivity. Um, and it might be to, like, a docking station or something like that, but not to, like, the computer itself, because I think I'm just going to be using my Surface tablet um, so I can move around and you know, have the same computer from one station to the next. So that'll be really nice. Um, yeah, so here uh, I made, I terminated this cable here, or cut it short, I should say. And um, this cable goes to, where does this go? I forgot. Oh, okay, so this cable uh, is for this uh, this AC, a, uh, AC to DC power adapter. Um, and I just, you know, cut off some of the length. Some of the other stuff I just rolled up because I didn't want to remake or re, like redo cables. So I was able to get that neatly tucked in there. Um, this right here, this is uh, I think it's like a 24 or 12 volt, 2 amp um, power supply or DC power supply. 
or AC to DC power supply. And that powers this micro tick device here. This right here um, just powers the fan. So I really only have, I only have three things in here. And this right here takes up this whole, um, with everything the way it is now, takes up this whole, like I only have maybe one plug left right there. <clears throat> uh, also made an, my own end here for um, the, because if I was gonna fit it through the gland, I had to cut the cable of course, because I didn't want to put it like through a huge hole and then just have a gland like that be this big for a, a small cable like that. So cut the cable, custom uh, custom length, and I was able to, um, uh, what's it called? I was able to get a right angle uh, plug or head there. So that's really good. But um, yeah, so I got a little bit more testing to do with this, put the fiber up to it and everything like that. This is finally getting it complete here. Uh, so, or yeah, getting to completion here. And so I can do final testing to make sure everything's good on it and then uh, actually put it into production. So I'm going to go inside the house, hook up the wireless access point, get out of this cold ass shed or pump house and uh, chill out for the rest of the night. But hey, I uh, hope you guys enjoy this. Another obfuscate.min video. And it's just something that I'm doing, a little hobby or a little, or a little project just so I can uh, get prepared for my proper workshop. I'm really excited about that. Really, really excited. Alrighty, peace.